This lesson will be on magnetic fields. And I have to warn you, science fiction force fields do not really exist, so don't get your hopes up. But I'll do my best to teach you a little bit about what does exist. So a magnetic field is a 3D area around a magnet that will exert a force on another magnetic object. So if I have a magnet and it is going to have an area all around it, everywhere, every direction that has this force. So if I bring in a metal object, it will be affected by this field. It is caused by two poles, so it has to have a north and a south pole. And it can be compared to a gravitational force. So it's kind of an you know interesting idea. Um, it won't look exactly the same, but if you say that this here is Earth, then there is a magnetic field around Earth as well as a gravitational field. But as you know, if we let's say we have an object here, well, it's going to be affected by the gravitational pull of Earth, and it's going to get pulled towards it. And we also know that the closer the object is, the greater that force is. <clears throat> and magnetic fields are the reason the compass exists. When you use a compass, the needle points along the vector field line of a magnetic field. So if this line here is a magnetic field line and we have a compass along that line, the compass needle will point in the direction of the magnetic field. Magnetic field lines are also invisible and they can be represented by magnetic field lines drawn on a page. So even though those lines don't actually exist, we can represent them. So here I've drawn something with a north pole and a south pole here, and we can show the field exists by drawing these field lines and their vectors so they all have arrows on them. There's a few things you have to know about the field lines themselves. Field lines point from north to south outside a magnet. They never cross each other. Think of it as being parallel, but they're going to be curved, so it's not actually parallel. They will be more concentrated where the field is stronger. So the stronger the field, the more lines we draw. And the field exists even if there is no other magnet nearby to prove it. So if I'm just holding a magnet, it doesn't seem like there's anything there, but we know that if we brought another magnet there, we get either a repel or an attract, depending on the poles of the magnet and the direction we're holding them. So I'm going to draw a couple of examples here. So we know that we have to go from north to south outside the magnet. So these field lines are going to come out. Oh, I need to pick the pen first. They're going to come out of the north end and into the south so that my arrow goes that way. And you can notice that the further away we get, the more spread out these lines are. And that's because the further away, the weaker the field is. And you can see that if you're looking here or here, that that is where it, that is the most concentrated. That is where the field is the strongest. We can also draw one for a horseshoe magnet. So the horseshoe magnet will have a magnetic field, again going from north to south, and we could keep drawing these lines infinitely. They would keep going. So really the magnetic field itself is infinitely large. It'll just get weaker and weaker the further out you go. For interest's sake, there are a bunch of places that you might find magnetic fields. So if you're interested to learn a little bit, here are some possibilities. The compass, obviously. In metal scrap yards, like in old car lots, uh, they have really large magnets. In metal detectors, 
cell phone chargers, use magnetic fields, trains, um, like in the tracks and stuff, in lieu of traditional brakes, they sometimes use magnetic fields, uh, drop zone, same idea, and the natural phenomenon of the northern lights is caused by uh, the magnetic field of Earth. 